Another gut punch to Central Texas this morning as another disaster unfolds with our most recent ice storm now exiting towards the east with another snow chance entering from the west. All right, thanks Avery. Ice and lots of it as you're waking up this morning and the last hour or so, Austin Energy telling, uh, telling you to be prepared to be without power today, maybe even longer. The governor out now calling for an investigation and even resignations. This was a, a total failure by ERCOT. But is there any singular person or singular entity at fault for, for, for what's going on right now? Well, you know, uh, not as we see it. You wanted to answer Central Texas, so CBS Austin took your question straight to the CEO of ERCOT. What he's saying that you might not want to hear coming up in 15 minutes. Well, stay alive, don't drive. That is the message as you wake up. Central Texas roads have another coating of ice multiplying the danger if you're on them we'll show you coming up in live team coverage you're watching cbs austin this morning central texas trusted it was negative two degrees last night we had our daughter wrapped up in as many pieces of clothing as we possibly could but we were really scared We've seen so many stories like this, and there's just no end in sight. Power outages are still keeping hundreds of thousands of people in the dark across central Texas. Right now, another disastrous ice storm is coming in with it. The chance of widespread destruction and potentially more energy disruptions. It's not the news we want to hear. An extremely dangerous situation getting even more so by the minute. Thanks for joining us here at CBS Austin. I'm Allison Miller. And I'm John Carlos Estrada. This time it's been ice and rain that's been following all morning, even overnight. Avery, most of that has moved out. What's coming up next for us? More snow because um, it's 2021 and apparently that's just what we have to deal with. Listen, it's been heartbreaking. Um, we have the burden of having to tell you this bad news every day, but you have the burden of having to live it. Some of us are too. We're almost done, I promise, but it's just been uh, one after another. Many of you, uh, I'm saying you, many of our normal viewers can't even watch us because their power is still out now for 48 hours plus. This is what happened this morning. Ice moving so slowly from west to east. We had some radar indicated rain totals of one to two inches. This would be a big rain event in the spring, but this is ice that possibly accumulated. The bullseye from Travis County, it always seems to be up to Williamson County where that ice accumulated. And again, that weight on trees, the weight on power lines. That's why we have more power outages this morning. 186,000 in Austin alone. That's going up uh, as this ice continues to wreak havoc near possible travel is still with us and yeah we do have to deal with that snow so we're going to cross that bridge we're going to get through it and then we're going to finally get some sunshine we'll show you what this all means in just a bit we have team coverage from all angles capturing this developing storm and extensive power outages as well as water supply issues and more but first we turn to cbs austin's fred cantu is monitoring the hazardous road conditions off of i-35 and fred how are the conditions there at 903. i'm sorry i can't hear you for the sirens we are near one of the uh fire stations here in downtown Austin, and uh, apparently uh, they are making a run for the, the uh, highway right now. Uh, yeah, it's a fire department unit. And, and really, those are the only people that should be on the roads right now, and everyone else who can stay home uh, should uh, keep the roads clear for those emergency units to be running. Uh, the roads are starting to pick up. We're starting to see some 18-wheelers up on I-35. Now that there is uh, daylight, and they can better see some of the obstacles ahead, but there are some things that you just can't see. Uh, the uh, I-35 has remained open uh, through this, but uh, some of the other uh, roads in town are closed because of the icy conditions, and the list uh, has gotten pretty long. We have a 183 cl closed from Lake Line through uh, Cedar Park, Park and Leander, uh, Texas 21 out at Mustang Ridge, heading east from Mustang Ridge, uh, North Mopac from downtown to uh, uh, Palmer Lane reporting uh, lane closures, US 183 from Ben White to 290 East, and then 290 East over toward uh, uh, Mainer, and SH 45 Southwest from uh, Mopac to FM 1626 down in the Manshack area. Also near the airport, uh, Texas 71 is reported. Uh, with lane closures on uh, 
uh, heading out toward SH-130. So you can see a lot of uh, problems with the roads right now, all of it having to do with the rain we had overnight and it's just starting to freeze on these uh, rough, uh, on these uh, roadways. So all we're asking you to do is if you can stay off of the roads, do so for your own safety. Reporting live from downtown Fred Cantu, CBS Austin News. All right, thank you, Fred. Well, despite the conditions outside, first responders are working tirelessly to keep us safe. You just heard the sirens behind Fred's location near I-35 downtown. Joining us right now is Division One Fire Chief Thayer Smith with the Austin Fire Department. Good morning, Chief Smith. Good morning. Well, thank you for taking a moment to speak with us. Can you give us an idea of how many and what types of calls AFD is responding to right now? Uh, right now, uh, luckily, the, the traffic accidents are down. People are doing a good job of staying off the road. We've actually only gone to three traffic accidents since midnight, and only 26 in the last 24 hours. That That's really low. Uh, the big problem continues to be the broken water pipes. I think we were well over 600. Yesterday, we have another 165. Uh, just since midnight, uh, but really we, we can only get to about 20% of those calls. We're, we're taking the calls. We're trying to prioritize the ones that are maybe be ca causing a, a life-threatening situation with, you know, electrical problems or, or freezing problems, property damage. Um, so we, we simply just don't have the resources to get to all those. Uh, but the big one we really want to talk about is what we call toxic exposure. Uh, last 24 hours, we've run 22 toxic exposure calls with our partners from EMS. Uh, and that's where uh, the majority of those have been where somebody has brought charcoal into the home and then had a carbon monoxide uh, poisoning reaction. Uh, and I know people are desperate to cook or keep warm, but you just simply can't bring charcoal into the home. We've, we, a lot of those calls have been multiple patients. Uh, I don't have the total number that EMS has transport, transported, but I know it's been several. Uh, fortunately, uh, to this point, we're not aware of any deaths. Um, but we, we just really have to get that message out about not bringing charcoal into the home. Yeah, that's a really scary situation. People are just trying to keep warm. You know, we want to prevent future calls because y'all are already stretched thin. Is there a message besides that one to help us get out to the public to so your crews can mitigate some of these issues? Um, really, I think, you know, with the broken water pipes, you know, really the, the big one is we're simply not going to come to the ones that are outside. Uh, if it's inside in a life-threatening situation, uh, property situation, we'll attempt to get to those. We'll we'll take the call, but really, uh, what can really help is if you can, uh, you know, find out where your water cutoff is and and do that, or get in touch with your maintenance if you're in a condominium or apartment complex, that sort of thing. If you can find those resources, um, and and be able to help mitigate that yourself, because like I said, with over 600 yesterday, we just simply. We, we can't get to that many of them. Yeah, we've been trying to hammer that message here all morning long. Hopefully people will spread the word. Today could be, though, the I would say the busiest day for first responders. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Is AFD prepared? We are. Uh, we, ha we have extra staffing. Uh, we've staffed uh, nine extra four-wheel drive vehicles, the smaller vehicles that, that can get around easier with the chains on than our larger apparatus. Um, and like I said, we're prioritizing many of these calls that we go on, we're, we're only going to the broken water pipe calls as we, we can, you know, prioritize against other emergencies. So we're certainly ready to go. We've got chains on our vehicles. Um, we've had our own issues. Uh, I know if the public's out and about, they've probably seen uh, two of our three of our vehicles on the side of the road where we, we slipped off the roadway ourselves in some of the hillary, hillary terrain in, in northwest Austin. Uh, but we've been able to get those crews into other vehicles, and we're waiting for the towing company to go recover those for us. But like I said, we've moved into a lot of smaller four-wheel drive vehicles with chains, so we are able to, to get around and get to these emergencies. Yeah, you kind of forget the first responders are dealing with a lot of the same problems that a lot of the public is. Thank you and your team, and thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us this morning. Hopefully, uh, we can get that message out. Okay, thank you for that. That was Chief Thayer Smith with the Austin Fire Department. Our number one priority is getting the power back on for as many people as quickly as we can, but we have to do it in, in a safe way and a reliable way that uh, keeps the system intact. That was the CEO of ERCOT letting us know that they're struggling with the overwhelming demand 
Austin Energy telling us this morning that the ice storm overnight is causing more outages. They say be prepared to be without power today, maybe even longer. Now we did ask Mayor Adler if he had any idea when the power will be back on. He says that he does not know. Well, this morning we spoke to Steve Leon over the phone in Northwest Austin, who's been without power for more than 55 hours. He and his wife keeping warm inside their car for short periods of time. CBS Austin's Christian Flores is live in the Great Hills area. Christian, you've been doing much of the same too, trying to keep warm in the vehicles. Yeah, that's something a lot of people here at the hotel have been doing really uh, the past two days. Fortunately, we did get our power back early this morning, but we're not too hopeful that that'll last. And here's why I want to show you just kind of what the ice situation looks. I'm not going to do a walk and talk live shot here. I'd rather to keep my bones, you know, intact, not broken. However, that's something that we're seeing plague really the city of Austin, just this new ice that's coming down. And on a statewide level, that's hurt, obviously, because it's really frozen up the natural gas and coal generators, as well as, you know, uh, ice up the wind turbines and uh, created some issues as far as the solar panels, but also in a local level, Austin Energy, like you mentioned, said to prepare to go all day today without power, if not longer because of this new ice buildup. And it's not just because of the stuff at the state level on a local level, something that we saw a lot last week where we saw ice just way down on trees and power lines causing outages, you know, the old fashioned way. So these are a couple things we want to keep our eyes out for all morning long. We've seen thousands of customers have power restored and then thousands uh, of customers have outages all over again. So this is something that we're just going to see the seesaw pretty much all day, probably the next few days. So we're obviously going to be able to, to, to take a look at that and make sure uh, to try to get a better timeline when these power, uh, the power uh, uh, restorations might be full time. But as soon as we get more information, we'll be sure to keep you updated. For now, reporting live in North Austin, Christian Flores, CBS Austin News. All right, thanks, Christian. Your time now is 9-11. No relief in sight for Central Texas. We just heard from Austin Fire Department the last two days alone. 600 calls for pipes have been burst. That is each day. Today, they've already gotten over 160 calls for help. They said they can only get to 20% of them. You're watching CBS Austin this morning. Continuous coverage of this historic winter storm. And just to let you know, we're here for you. Critical information scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Yes, and you can check, sorry, you can check weather right over here. Crescent Wrench, know where your water shutoff valve is. That is a big message that they're trying to hammer home. Uh, if you need answers and you can't find them, you can also send JC and I a message online. We'll try to get that information to you. But we are back after this with just a quick break. We're back with extended coverage. All right, want to take you outside. This is our Hilton downtown camera. Notice something funny. Unfortunately, this isn't just ice on the lens, but also fog rolling into downtown Austin. Here's something you probably haven't heard of before. Freezing fog. We have low visibilities out in the hill country down to a half mile out at Lago Vista, a mile or less in some locations out in the hill country. This is freezing fog, so um, it's like ice, but just very, very, very slowly accumulating. It's uh, again, just like freezing rain kind of collects on everything and can cause problems. But with temperatures below 32 across all the hill country, it's just a little bit more ice. It's not going to be nearly as significant as what came through this morning. But yeah, there are such things as freezing fog advisories. That's what you're seeing through San Angelo out into Ozona and uh, Odessa. That is going to be just west of us, but we're seeing some of it here everywhere in pink. By the way, you probably f are familiar with this color by now as a winter storm warning that's still in effect. Ice storm is gone, so why is it still here? It's because we still have another storm on the way as ice storm exits towards the east. We already have some echoes out there, some radar echoes out in the hill country. I just checked with the National Weather Service because I wanted to find out is this already some more ice falling and no, it's not at least not yet. There may be some very light sprinkles making it down, but this is upper level moisture that is mostly evaporating before getting here. So great news. We'll take it. Uh, there is more where that came from, though. There's a bigger batch of moisture over here. Some lift in the atmosphere that is going to eventually translate this into some snow. Until we get there, we're going to have a hard time getting even some sunshine. So that's why I don't have your temperatures getting above 32 for most of the area. So whatever ice is there is going to have a hard time leaving today. And then here comes the snow as early as midnight tonight. And then through a good chunk of tomorrow morning, we're going to see some snow showers and it could accumulate and it could be significant for some, but it's not going to be much compared to what we've already been through. So there's your good news. 32 today. Precip is clearing. I think later tonight we will get some of that snow. I'll show you how much could fall um, when we warm up because we will 
I promise. And I'll show you what all this means as we get into the future. Coming up. In the last two days, 600 calls for pipes bursting. That's according to the Austin Fire Department. They've already taken 160 calls for help, and they can only get to 20% of them. That ice is a big problem this morning. What steps you should take to prevent flooding in your home? We have updates coming up in our extended coverage right now on CBS Austin. Your time now is 9.20 on this Wednesday morning as conditions worsen. Capital Metro announcing that it's suspending services today and possibly again tomorrow. Instead, officials say they are working on emergency operations to help the city of Austin support cold weather shelters and those in need of life-saving transportation. In addition, Cap Metro will suspend fare collection through Sunday. Well, the flights are still on for today. That's the latest message this morning from Austin Bergstrom International Airport. Starting at 1 this afternoon, ABIA will be allowed to go for incoming and outgo flights. Any flights prior to 1 have since been canceled. This is a look from Monday. You can see the uh, runway looking like a tundra there. While seeing th things do seem to be moving at the airport, they're asking passengers to contact their airlines prior to traveling to the airport. The reason? Well, this morning, a fresh pile of ice has dropped and there could be additional delays or even cancellations. Well, Texans are flocking to HEBs after stores closed early Sunday and all day Monday due to the harsh weather conditions. And you can see lines stretching across the parking lot here, spanning half a mile on Tuesday. Some customers say they waited more than four hours Currently, many HEB locations will remain closed due to outages or operate under limited hours. They did give us an update. They say at those locations that were open yesterday, that could change. We should get an update by 10 this morning if they'll be up and running. An unsettling but familiar scene, empty shelves. In an attempt to ride out this winter storm, Central Texans are stockpiling supplies. To prevent consumers from being taken advantage of, Travis County Judge Andy Brown has placed an order against price gouging and electricity use by businesses. All right, we want to turn to Avery because the freezing rain has ended, but this is, we're nowhere near over with this storm. I know, and we'll talk about it, I promise. Let's try to find a little joy in what has been a really chaotic time the last week. This has been a snowstorm and an impressive one at that, and there have been a lot of good pictures, a lot of good fun being had by kids, a distraction at least for many. Building some snowmen, having some snowball fights, skiing down roads, why not? This was a photo from Pamela of a cousin in town enjoying the snowstorm. Hopefully they aren't trapped here. Um, it's obviously going to be a mess for a little while. This morning's ice storm not helping. There is ice, there is snow in downtown Austin. That ice in many locations this morning is three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. Even if we get a little bit of sunshine just through the clouds, it may not be enough to get that ice to go away today. That's just how much fell, so you should anticipate on roads being as treacherous as they have been um, all day long. I, I don't see much improvement, unfortunately, at least not yet. It's going to take a little bit. Reason why is not only do we have this ice on the ground and clouds shading and insulating us, but still some colder air moving in out of the north today. This is the last little push of Arctic air. It's much colder in North Texas, up in Dallas towards Amarillo and Abilene. It's single digits in teens, so we could be worse. Remember this morning, this time yesterday morning, we were still in the single digits crawling our way back, but um, we got to take this in stride too. We have another storm on the way. It's all around this low pressure system. Little disturbances coming through the next one already showing up in West Texas. But as I mentioned before, this is mostly evaporating before reaching the ground, which is great news because we had a nice storm in the hill country too. So uh, maybe a couple flurries making it to the surface, but that's not going to hurt. This is uh, still a reference to a bigger batch of moisture that could be moving our way and our computer models continue to suggest it's going to produce some accumulating snow. So that's why this winter storm warning has been crawling across your screen for like the last week week now is in effect for one more day. It'll go until 6 p.m. tomorrow. So we had the ice storm this morning and on top of that we'll add us a little snow. If you're keeping score at home, we've got like eight different layers to this cake. So it's going to take a while for all this to clear, but it will. This is the last little shot we got. This is our extended high resolution computer model. It updates every six hours for us and it has handled everything extremely well. So what does it say? I think by late tonight, I, I don't know if we're going to have stuff making it to the surface just yet. The air is pretty dry that's moving in. It's cold and it'll support snow, but it's also dry and sometimes it's hard for snow to survive on the way to the surface. But uh, yeah, we could have some snow showers as early as midnight tonight. I think it's more likely that this kind of creeps in by sunrise tomorrow, 6 a.m. and beyond, and then we could uh, keep it around. 
for a good chunk of the day. The accumulation of snow is not going to be as much as what fell Sunday into Monday, the Valentine's Day storm, but one to three inches is the official forecast from the National Weather Service. The trend has been for most of this to fall to the southwest of Austin, so we're not going to see the six to eight inch totals that we had uh, not too long ago, but there are a couple spots uh, depending on how the models shake out and how this all plays out that could get four to five inches. And that's significant, isn't it? Um, on any day of the week, but here we are uh, after getting seven to eight inches and it's just kind of another day. Unfortunately, we need to uh, dry out. We need to warm up and we will. But a reminder as we do warm up and get this precipitation behind us, we got the 60s on the way this weekend. It's going to look great. It's going to feel great. We do also need to remind you that this warming temperature trend is going to lead to more water issues. If you are a homeowner or if you are a business owner and you have no water flowing through your pipes, odds are it's not a water outage with your city. There are some of those issues, but it's probably going to be ice in your pipe and there could be ice in your pipe that has caused the pipe to expand, break, and once the ice is melting, which it will in the next few days, that's going to break the dam, so to speak. We've been seeing it already the last few days. Even just this morning, many water pipes are breaking. So now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time to know where your water valve is, to shut off for your property. I promise it'll save you so much time and money. I've seen it so far already on Twitter. People are reaching out and saying this works. Know how to operate it in case there is water gushing into your house. It could save you an insurance claim, a whole lot of mess. Um, once we get through this, that should be it. We got to turn the power on too. We'll keep you updated as we know more. All right, Avery, um, Austin Fire Department even telling us that they, as of today, 165 burst pipe calls, only 20% of them they can get to. Yeah. Let's take a look at uh, some Texans helping Texans. This is Mattress Mac. If you're from the mm -hmm. Houston area, you know who this guy is. Just to let you know an update. He opened up his mattress stores to, re to provide some relief for Houstonians that are having trouble trying to stay warm. No one is surprised. And take a look at this. This actually I just put in. This is an Austin resident who actually is using an old time stove <laughs> to make some food for the neighbors. Made some waffles there. Would, isn't that amazing? That is awesome. <laughs> this is Cece Rowe. She is basically a local hero. She's been making runs back and forth to neighbors running supplies in the Windsor neighborhood. And I've been told on social media that the whole neighborhood there is just really yeah. coming together. And those shoes are making her do that. Yeah, yeah they, she was she was gifted those. Uh, this is one of my favorite places to, for takeout, Oriental Kitchen in Pflugerville, owned by a local couple, and they were giving out free food to those without power, just going above and beyond, really. And I love this video that, Allison, you got. We've seen a lot of people helping other people stuck in the snow, and this is a USP, USPS worker who uh, needed to get out, and these people right there helped, helped out. Love it's it. good to see. It's good to see this. Yes. All right, ice and rain dropping overnight, and you add the below freezing temps this morning. It is not a good combination. We've got crew station all over the area. Keep an eye on things. Let's go out to CBS Austin's Betty Cross. And Betty, last time we checked in with you, you were talking how slippery things are. You even showed us a tree branch that fell. What else are you seeing out there? Well, I'll tell you what, the freezing rain and just the rain has finally stopped falling. So we are seeing conditions start to improve very slowly. But here's that tree I was showing you. This is a branch that actually fell off during one of our earlier live shots. You can see down here that fresh cut. And this is happening because of all the ice that's accumulating on the branches. You can see right here. And of course, they just break off. They're so frozen. And of course, all that ice on the different branches you can see it's going to keep weighing the trees down. We're just hoping we don't start to lose more branches, see more of our trees hurt this winter until we get out of this freezing weather later in the week. And the problem isn't just the trees. If you look down here on the sidewalks and probably what you'll experience on your driveway as well, there are these kind of a thin layer of ice that maybe is about mm, a tenth of an inch thick that can really be a problem for you if you're going to be out walking on sidewalks or getting into your car on your driveway and certainly on the road you're seeing some of this as well so certainly be cautious this morning as you leave your house we want to give you one last look at the roadways because you can see the conditions are improving just a little bit we're seeing more traffic get out here everyone going pretty slow have not seen any accidents and one other positive even with all the power outages going on traffic signals are working again 
We're seeing businesses, a few more also having power. And the latest word we heard is that between 16 and 32,000 customers out here in San Marcos still don't have electricity, but that's a better number than what it was. And the reason for that wide variation between 16 and 32 is because of the differences when they do the rolling power outages. So hoping more of those people get power today and it warms up just a little bit. Reporting live in San Marcos, Betty Cross, CBS Austin News. You bet. I don't know if you saw this, but she was taking tiny little steps. So if you're going to step outside, make sure you do so carefully. Well, just into the newsroom, we're expected to hear from ERCOT at 11 a.m. They're hosting a media call with the president and CEO, but Austin Energy already telling us this morning to expect outages to last today, possibly longer. If you do have power, you may lose it. CBS Austin will join that call and we'll have updates. You're watching CBS Austin this morning's continuous coverage of this historic winter storm. We'll be right back.